Melinda Pacini, and I am going to be your guide for getting the most out of your quilting and creative foot kit. Each one of these feet has a lot of possibilities in your sewing room, so let's get started. The braiding foot allows you to use texturized cord and be able to freely sew on your machine. The way that this works is you introduce the cord into the front opening here, and then as it comes out through the back of the foot, you'll notice that there's a nice groove opening that will allow that to go in. Now it's actually a great idea to feed the cord in before you put this foot on the machine. And now that I have it threaded, let's take this over to the machine and see how it works. Let's start by snapping the foot in place. And I'm going to make sure that I don't um, release this thread. Like I don't want it to come falling out of the machine. Now that I have that in place, I'm gonna place some fabric underneath the foot. And I also wanna point out that I do have some tearaway stabilizer as I am going to be using a wide zigzag stitch. I want to make sure that the width of the stitch is wide enough to clear the outside edges of my braiding. So let's take a few stitches and it looks like it's clearing it well. So now what this foot allows me to do is to be able to meander a little bit on my fabric and I don't have to worry about managing this cord because it just follows. I love the textural aspect of this. And while I think that this would be beautiful on garments, I can see very easily that this type of technique would look beautiful on dimensional quilts. Now I do have a smaller size of cording. Let's do one more bit of stitching here. If you lift the foot up once you've got it introduced, you can pull it back underneath the foot a little bit easier. So I have done some projects where I've seen that if you had two different colors of fabric to follow along that for that distinction would be pretty. And because this is a narrower cord, I'm gonna go for a narrower zigzag stitch and let's just try this. So I think this is beautiful and I've noticed that there's an explosion of fabrics on the market today that have a lot of uh, texture to them. How fun would it be to create your own fabric which you could easily do with this foot. So I find this inspiring and I think that you probably will too. The clear open toe foot gives great visibility, especially when you're doing applique. Also on the bottom of it, there's a wide enough channel to let satin stitches glide through smoothly. Let's take it to the machine. We'll just snap the foot on. And I've already set my machine up for a satin stitch. You might find that little red mark on the toe of the foot to be a nice aid for lining your fabric up as well. The open toe area of the foot, along with its clear nature, is what really does help you get things aligned so that your stitching always turns out beautiful. If your pattern calls for some vinyl for a clear window, sewing on your standard foot is a nightmare. This metal will drag and you simply can't get good stitching. This is where having a Teflon foot makes a huge difference. This plastic foot will glide easily over fabrics that would typically stick to metal. 
Let's take it to the machine. We're going to start by snapping the foot on. And let's just lay our little pocket on the fabric and watch how easily it glides. This kind of little vinyl pocket is the perfect place to put your business card. The five hole cord foot is named because of the five little holes that are on the front of the foot prior to where you stitch. This is a perfect place to take some decorative threads, maybe that you've been hanging on to for something special and feed them through here. Now I've taken the time to thread these already in place and here's a little tip. Once you've got them in, put a piece of tape on the back because it's much easier to preload this foot with the threads that you're going to use before you get to the machine. Let's take this now over to the machine and see what it looks like when we stitch. The stitch that I'm using is stitch number 14, which is a triple zigzag. What this is going to do is walk its way over and back side to side. In this way, it's going to grab every single one of the threads as it comes out the machine. Now I'm going to begin by sliding my fabric underneath the area that I'm going to sew. And before I introduce this foot, I'm going to have to release the tape. So I'm going to hold on to the threads here and then just unwrap my tape and do this slowly enough so that I don't lose any of the thread that I've gotten into place. So just gonna take a moment here and remove this carefully. And then I'm going to pull a little bit more out the back and then slide this underneath the presser foot and snap it in place. Now I can lift up the foot and back my fabric up so that I'm starting stitching at the beginning and I'm holding on to those threads so that they don't go anywhere. So let's just begin by taking a few stitches. Now this three-step zigzag, what it does is it actually walks back and forth and it's gonna make sure that it's grabbing all of those threads for me. Now, if you like, you can take the time to kind of separate the threads as they're coming out of the foot, but make sure that you do this after you've already anchored the thread or you'll end up pulling out some of your thread. Another recommendation is to actually take the threads and anchor them down using a monofilament thread. Now I've not done this for this videotaping because I want you to be able to see the stitching. So this is my needle thread, which I'm just gonna get out of the way. So a monofilament thread would actually allow you to be able to just see your pretty thread that's coming out from underneath. But as I'm going down here, I'm just going to make sure that I've kind of got these a little bit separated. And so the width of your stitch is definitely determined by its ability to go back and forth and capture all of those threads. And because it's actually going through these little guides, it kind of separates the threads on its own. I'm going to trim my additional threads and just pull this out to the back of the machine. Now the, the threads that I've chosen are metallic and so if they do get kind of wound around each other just kind of play around. So while that might have looked like a little bit of a mess as it was coming into the machine it certainly did work itself out because of those separated holes. Also notice how my thread, as it's anchoring it down, is taking steps and walking across, anchoring those threads every single time it goes back and forth, which is why you want to choose that triple zigzag rather than just a regular zigzag. So I think this adds a pretty little touch to your fabric and hopefully you'll find a good use for taking some decorative threads that you might own and getting them into um, these five holes. Now I will mention to you, 
that the only limitation that you have is what you can fit through that hole. So dig through your sewing closet and find what you have because I think this is a pretty technique. To add texture and dimension to your fabric, turn to the baby lock fringe foot. This foot has an open channel in the bottom in addition to a flange that rests on top. And as your machine goes back and forth to form a zigzag stitch, it gives enough lift in the thread to form this fun little fringe. Let's take this to the machine and check out the settings. I have my machine set up for a zigzag stitch, but I've made some adjustments that really will help me ensure success. I have my stitch width for my zigzag set at two and a half millimeters in addition to a stitch length of 0.7. I've also adjusted my tension down to 0.4, and this is the most important component to get the fringe look that you're seeking. I'm going to bring my fabric underneath the machine and lower the presser foot. Now my foot is an enclosed foot, meaning that I don't have a way of being able to slide the thread back. I'm going to take a few stitches and then trim it. When I get to the end of a row of stitching, I'm going to cut my thread and notice how my loops are all formed on that flange. I need to take my fabric and pull it straight back to get it off that hook. Look at how pretty this is. You can spend a lot of time crafting out a perfect little design to fill in with these stitches. Just remember that once you've started stitching, you can only go in one direction. So you'll need to start all over again. But I think that you could do some parallel rows here and really get something fun going on. So the fringe foot along with some bright colored thread that contrasts nicely would be a fun way to add some texture to your projects. The five groove pin tucking foot is named for the number of grooves that are on the bottom of the foot. These five separate channels give you the opportunity to be able to space rows of pin tucks so that they're lined up beautifully. You might recognize pin tucking as a technique that's been around for quite some time. When you turn fabric over, what you're going to see is that you have what appears to be a line down the center. This is actually your bobbin thread. And what's happening is that your needles are pulling over to the underside. So this is a stitch that's actually formed by using a twin needle. So not only do you need to have a pin tucking foot, but we're also going to be adding a twin needle to the mix. Now I have several different twin needles over here that I wanna just kind of talk to you about the different sizing and types of twin needles that there are so that you can choose the right one for your project. So inside of my machine, I actually have a three millimeter, so that's what that three comma O means, it's a three millimeter distance between my needles, and the 90 is the weight of the needle itself. So Schmetz, Class A, a number of different manufacturers make twin needles. Here is a four millimeter size 100. And when I take this out of the packaging, you're gonna notice that this is a very heavy duty needle. A size 100 needle is actually way too heavy of a needle for this lightweight fabric. But what I'm really pointing out is the difference here between the width of the needle. So as you can see, that's going to be one component, that distance. There's actually, this is a nice size, this is a size 70, a good lightweight, and this is even closer together. So your pin tucks are going to be shaped by not only this distance and the weight of the needle, but it's also going to have something to do with the foot itself. Now here also, I have another type of twin needle, and this one's called a stretch twin. So for somebody who's used to seeing this 
two rows of parallel stitching on knit garments, this would be the type of needle that you would grab to be able to do that type of hemming. But let's just go back over here now and talk about uh, this foot itself. And we're gonna take this over to the machine and I'll show you my setup. So as you're looking at my machine, you're gonna notice that I have my twin needles here. Now twin needles themselves, as you probably notice, have a single head for the shank that goes into the needle bar itself, but what you're going to have is two needles are projecting from it. That means that I have two different spools of thread. So some baby lock machines come with an extra spool pin like this that actually rests on top of the bobbin winder, or you may find that you also might have a different type which would actually fit on the bobbin winder, but that would allow your thread to come off in a horizontal fashion, just like the other spool of thread. And so how However you have your machine set up, you want to have two of the same weights and types of thread and you want them to both go through the same exact threading path. I typically do all of that at the same time, separating my threads at the end with one going in one side and one in the other. Now another thing to pay attention to, and a lot of people have questions about twin needles and wanting to know what's the capacity. So if you look at my needles right now, I'm going to lower my needles into the throat plate of my machine and I'm going to show you that these needles here are far enough away from the outside edges of my throat plate and I simply won't have a problem but I'm going to make sure that I have my machine at a center needle position and that's key here. You don't want to pick a left needle straight stitch. This definitely needs to be a center needle straight stitch. The next thing that I'm going to mention is that you may find that you can buy a twin needle that's got a much wider stance, but you cannot go any wider than a seven millimeter. And in fact, I would even stay a little bit in from there. I've noticed on the market, there's a lot of different widths of twin needles. So now that you've got that primer in place, I'm going to scoot my foot underneath this little snap-on bar of the machine. And if you look, you're going to notice that this hole right here is completely enclosed. And that means that when I start stitching, I'm gonna stop and pull my needle threads through to the back. So let's just introduce fabric here and I'll show you how this works. So your straight stitch machine actually works off of a bobbin and that's what's going to give a little bit of lift to this pin tuck. And what I'm gonna start with is lining up what I can see as my center groove along with this crease that I've placed in my fabric. And I'm gonna scoot my fabric back enough so that I'm starting actually on fabric. And now I'm just simply going to take a few stitches forward. And then I'm going to stop and raise my presser foot. And here's where I'm gonna take my stiletto and just slide it back behind my fabric with the hopes of being able to grab my needle threads. All right. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to stitch all the way down the length of this fabric. Now certainly you can use your thread cutter at the end and let's just pull this forward and see what we have. So you've got two parallel rows of stitching. It's perfect on the back side. Here's where I have my bobbin thread that's meeting with both of my top needle threads. Now where pin tucks really get to be pretty is when you can space them well. And you have some choices with this five groove foot. You certainly are welcome to go to the next groove, but I find that if I meet my previous row of stitching with this last channel that I like that and it actually makes my pin tucks fairly close together like I have in my sample here. Let me bring this over and show it to you again. So there's really not a lot of distance between and this is a nice accent on a blouse or wherever you might want to place it. What I did to get the spacing between this row and this one is by positioning my fabric so that 
the previous row of stitching is just to the outside of the foot. And because I'm doing this in a way that gives me something even, I'm able to do that by using the edge of the foot on the outside to the right and also to the left. So let's just stitch that. So here we are with three spaced rows of pin tucks. Here I had them a little bit closer together. Whatever your project is calling for, whatever speaks to you, certainly you can space them. And now that you've seen how this works, you probably can already tell that if you've chosen a needle that has a greater distance than this three millimeter that I have, you'll either have wider pin tucks, and if you go for something that's a little bit closer together, it's actually going to maybe draw that fabric up a little bit more. But no matter what combination you choose, I truly feel that this pin tucking foot does give a lot of ways to be able to add dimension to any type of garments that you make or even on some home decor projects. I know that for many people this is a technique that they have a lot of interest in and it's a great way to get familiar with twin needle stitching. So this is definitely a foot that I like for heirloom sewing, but I've noticed as I look at ready to wear, it's cropping up more and more often. And now that you know how to do it, it's your chance to explore this technique on your own. You can find this foot and many other creative feet at your local Baby Lock retailer.